All right, guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at underground structures, which are basically part of a series that I am working on. Or if you're watching this at a later date, I probably already started working on it. But uh, at the moment, this is kind of like a community suggestion. So it's being posted a little bit sooner than the actual series. So um, if you're watching it at a later date, then there's a good chance that there's already a playlist and everything for all the different uh, videos for the structure parts. So what we're looking at here is underground structures. And this is more of an advanced configuration for the structures itself. You might notice that there are some lights missing and stuff like that. And there's also some blocks here. We'll be covering that in the series as well uh, the, for a thing called processor list. But at the moment, let's just focus on the actual structure and seeing how it's actually generating. So you can see that it's generating a lot like mine shafts or other un underground structures that uh, spread from underneath. This uh, goes through caves that already exist so we can see some cases of this in like these parts where it goes through a cave system that already exists uh, the other option is to have caves generate around the structure uh, i have a example that we can switch to really quickly to see how that generates so in some cases you might want something that generates around the structure uh, giving a little bit of a buffer zone for generation this might be handy for things like the and or the deep dark cities and stuff like that ancient cities i think they call it and this is the same system that ancient cities use they have it generate around the structure and it's based on the height of the structure and all that so basically what i've done is i've just selected the actual structure so it's about this much space between your actual structure to your uh the padding around the actual place that is generating and so um the, the nice thing about this is it actually clears out an area and other things generate around it um, naturally. As you can see, the vines and stuff generate all around the structure and so do other plants and stuff like that. So depending on how you set up your generation and stuff, you might notice some things like this actually generating. Uh, but other than that, the only difference is that it does generate caves around it. So we can go ahead and pop into mCrater and take a look at the settings. Uh, first, we'll unlock the actual code, and then we'll go ahead and uh, start making the changes that we need to the um, config file for the structure. All right, so this is literally the only structure that I have uh, for the structure that we're gonna generate. Right now it's locked and the code is already set to generate something. We're going to go ahead and click on the unlock version while selecting the structure and we're going to unlock it. It might regenerate the code. If not, uh, you might want to just make sure that the code does regenerate so all the settings are properly set up. So if it doesn't do that, then you can do that manually. We're going to open up the structure and there are a couple things uh, that you want to make sure that the structure is set up for. First thing uh, you're going to want generation stage is set to underground structures. Uh, this is what ancient cities use for generation as well as most other underground structures. And you want to make sure that your structures are rigid. So once you've done those two things, uh, you can decide on what kind of generation uh, adaption that you want for your structure. Now the uh, beard uh, box which is the cave generation one so basically what that will do is it will um, make it so it's like an actual um, the cave version with all the vines and stuff hanging down it adds a little bit of buffer space around the structure you can use that one if you want if you want it to be more like the mine shafts where it goes through the caves and stuff like that but doesn't actually put caves around it then you can select this as none and it will basically not include um, any cave padding around the structure itself i haven't tested the other two ones but i know that the ancient cities use this one and for things like uh, the dungeon or for um, mine shafts and stuff you'd probably want none for that one uh, once you've decided those two things make sure that your structure actually generates um, you want all your other structures to also be rigid 
uh, for your structure and this will be your path for those jigsaw blocks so in example it will be the registry name of your actual structure so if we open up the registry by right clicking on it we can see that it's dungeon so it would be dungeon underscore and then paths would be the pool, pool name for the um, actual uh, generation files uh, where we're going to be generating these structure types from. So keep that in mind when you're actually generating your structures. Uh, once you've done all that, I suggest actually making sure that uh, you set this to uh, top layer modification just for the time being. Test if your structure does generate on the surface. Uh, if this does if this is the case, then you can move on to setting it to underground structures, and then we can actually start manipulating the structure to generate underground. Assuming that you've already tested and everything like that, what you can do is you can just basically go ahead and make sure that everything is regenerated. Once again, this might take a couple seconds depending on the size of your workspace, and you're going to go ahead and lock the element. So we're gonna just lock the code, and then we're going to go to our workspace settings. So for our workspace folder, we're going to go to source, main, resources, data, underground, or whatever your namespace for your mod is, and then world gen. And then you want to go in your structure uh, folder for that. You should see the same name as your um, actual mod element. So in this case, it's dungeon. If there's two words attached to it, it might be underscore something else, but it should be the same name that you called it. You're going to open this up with uh, an editor like Notepad++, or you could technically open it with um, your default computer's editor, but I suggest Notepad++ because it's just easier to read everything from, and it's um, more designed for this kind of thing. So we're going to open that up and we can see that there's a few things in here that we have set up. So, uh, for example, um, the two things that we're not going to need is the motion blocking. Well, that's the one thing that we don't need. Uh, we're going to actually delete that entire line because this is going to put it at the top of the world. So we don't want that in there. Uh, it's not required, so we can just delete that part. The second change and the only other change that you need to do, uh, assuming that you've configured all your other settings properly, is set this value to something like negative 27. And that will put it around the level of um, where the deep slate is. I think this is the same value that um, ancient cities use. Now, setting it to zero might uh, set the value for the structure to be around zero level. I'm not sure how this all works, but um, from what Wiki says, if it's set, then it's going to set the start position of where the generation can happen. Now, without the motion blocking that we just deleted, so the um, this line of code, it's not gonna put it on the surface. So what we can do is we can use this to uh, basically go ahead and do like negative 27 to put it somewhere near the deep slate um, level and then this is should be an integer it shouldn't be a point form so make sure it's a solid number like what I've typed out here and then we're going to just save the file and that's all you need to do to make an underground structure we're going to just pop in game and quickly check that out all right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to recreate that world that I had, and then we're going to go ahead, make sure that we're in creative mode, and we're going to regenerate or create a new world. And then, then we can actually see where the gener or the structure actually generates. So I already have a set location where I know where this is one generates, so it's gonna be easier for me to find it. And it's not too far away from the actual center of the world, so we'll be checking that out in just a second once the world generates and I'll walk you through the steps of how to actually locate one. So what we're going to do, uh, assuming that you're in creative and you have access to actual commands, we're going to locate and then we're going to select structure and then we're going to locate the structure that we want. So in this case, it's going to be our namespace followed by the structure name. So the structure registry, and then we're going to locate that. And it says that it's at 64 um, random 
height. And it's at the um, negative 368. So we're going to do TP and then we're going to just do 64. And then we're going to do something like 100 just to make sure that we're above the terrain. And then negative 368. And that should bring us directly over the um, actual structure itself. So if we go into spectator mode, just took a stream screenshot by accident. If we go into spectator mode, we can go underneath the terrain and keep the Y level that we're at. So we're just going to go straight down. And you might have noticed that there was uh, some structure generating. So we can see that we're right above the actual center of the structure, which is this block right here, which is the starting structure. So we can go in here and we can see that there is the dungeon part and there's stairs leading up to the second level. Kind of goes that way. You also might have noticed a few other things that are different about this structure. Um, we might have already covered it in the f in the future, but basically uh, the blocks for the stone bricks aren't mossy, and there is uh, not a mixture of missing light lanterns. This can be done through processor list. Uh, if I've already covered that in the future, then it should be in the playlist, which I'll link down below. So. Outside of that, you can see that it's also generating around uh, the caves around the um, actual structure as well, because we set the uh, port to uh, bear thin or whatever. So if we go into our notepad, we can see this is the bared box generation. So this is the one that generates the caves like this. So outside of that, that's all that I have to show. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.